Hosea chapter number 11. When Israel was a child, then I loved him. Notice the past tense. For God so loved the world that he gave his only. That's past tense. Pay attention to the ED of words. If that's not for, when you say to, God loves you. No, not if you have rejected Jesus Christ as your Savior. As Hosea's writing, I got BC 740. I have loved him. You know what God just said? I don't love you no more. Remember chapters 1 and chapter 2? You got to be careful when you do with the love of God. That love of God can be so right and it can be so wrong. I today am loved by God, not because of who I am or what I am, because of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You go take any one person out of a hundred. God doesn't love them if they don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and put their faith and trust in his son. There is no love. He says, Jesus says, who's God? He maketh the rain fall upon the just and the unjust. What do you do with the love of God there? God does things for those that, who don't do nothing for him just for the sake of nature. He's telling Israel, I loved you at one time and called my son out of Egypt. Israel is God's son. As a nation. Hosea breaks out to say that Israel is God's bride. Not Jesus' bride. The church is Jesus' bride. Israel is God's bride. God's son. How do you get that? I don't know. But that relationship. That family relationship that God has with one group of people and no other. How do you know who they are? Well, they are people called Israel, and they were called out of Egypt by God. As they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed unto Baal and burnt incense to graven images. What a testimony. That's why God loved them. Because they did do right and then they went and did wrong. I, God, taught Ephraim also to go. Taking them by their arms how to walk. So there is instruction by God, and you can't say in the book of Hosea, well, God is cruel, all that, what he's going to do with Israel and take them. He took them by the hand and he showed them how to walk. Now, when a parent does that with a child, beyond physical ailments, diseases, that a child can't walk. And I mean retard, I mean... It's impossible beyond the child's capability to, to walk or do anything. But you've got people here that God has taught, has taken by the hand, and they don't want to walk. They refuse to walk. It's like people in America. They don't want to work. They don't want to do labor, but they want the money and they want the food. God has showed them through Moses. The writing of Moses, what to expect and what to be done. But they knew not that I had healed them. Exodus 15, 16, Matthew 9, 12, Mark 2, 17, Luke 5, 31. God showed them mercy and grace. He still took care of them. Through the wilderness journey with, with Moses. From the time that Moses brought them out, guided them out through God, 
See, when Moses died just before the promised land in Jericho, you know how many times God could have just wiped them all out entirely? You know how many times God wanted to? That's the rain upon the just and the unjust. God holds judgment back because he's long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. He is telling Hosea to write 11 chapters. I don't want to do this. Judah, I don't want to sack Jerusalem. I don't want to send people to hell. This is what you're to do. That guy that preaches on the street, that, that, that couple that comes to your door, that piece of paper you picked up is not mean. It's my love for you. I drew them with cords of a man. He allowed men to come and tie them up. Literal, yes, and not literal. He had men bind them. You know, when he first called Paul, after Paul saw Jesus in the way, Paul was bound, not by men, but by the Lord, with blindness. For a period of time. Why? To get him right. Paul was, was put through perils in his life. Why? To help him to do right. Israel is going through all these things that we've read about so far and studied about since Genesis. Since they're called out of Egypt. All the troubles and problems because God wants them to do right. He wants them to turn to him for all their troubles and problems. With bands of love. What's that remind you of? Why would it be an S? What would that be equivalent today to make you think of bands of love? What we've been studying in Hosea. Wedding band. Wedding rings. He drew them with cords of men, the bands of love. How's that? God says, I'm married to you. I use men for you to be attracted to me. And draw closer to me. And I was to them as they that take off the yoke of their jaws. I removed that burden. The Bible speaks of exes, exes that they served with rigor and God pulled them out and took them out with a strong arm. And when they went through that Red Sea, God destroyed their enemy. The Egyptians were never to be a threat to them again. He said, but they were at times. They did come in. That's because Israel sinned against God. You know why Israel suffered in the land? Because God told them what we read today. Destroy all them that are in the land. Get rid of them. Not, they're, going to be, they're going to be thorns in your eyes. They're going to be pricks in your eyes. They're going to be trouble to you. You realize if Israel had done right, you would never need the story of David and Goliath. There would have never been a Goliath. You see, there would have been giants in there. Uh, I had his name. I was thinking about his name as soon as I said that. Oh. No, uh, um, Caleb. Do you want to tell 80 year old Caleb about beating up giants? That man went in there 80 years old and he went into the land of giants and kicked butt. Him and Joshua said, Hey, let's go get him. Let's go. And I laid meat onto them, provider. I gave them food. It was a land of milk and honey. You remember what the grapes they brought back? Two men had to carry them. God provided meat for them in the wilderness. God provided for them as who is supposed to provide for his wife? 
a husband. So when you look at what God's relationship is to Israel, you're to look at your relationship as a husband to a wife. He shall not return to the land of Egypt. Now we read earlier, they shall go to the land of Egypt. That was Ephraim. But the Assyrian shall be his king. That's prophecy. Assyria is coming, and they're going to do dominate you, and you're going to be held captive to them, and Israel never comes back. Not yet. That has not have happened yet. Judah goes back under Ezra and Nehemiah, but not Israel. Why? Because they refuse to return. Jeremiah 3, 1 through 25, Hosea 14, verse 4. You know what that, that refusal to return is? Can you think of one word that would, would be of that? They have not repented. So when you say someone said this prayer, when you say someone is saved, and they have not turned to God, and they have not become a new creature, they're not. They're still Israel, but they're not listening. They've not repented. And God says, okay, here comes the enemy to come and get you. I'm not on your side. They kept going their merry old way. Now, what would have happened if they truly repented to God and got right? They'd be stewing the land today. And the sword shall abide on his cities and shall consume. His branches. Now here we go. Hosea keeps on using Israel as a term of a branch, as a vine. If you take away the branches, what's going to hold the fruit? Nothing. Without the branches, there is no fruit. There is no leaves. Leaves are needed. photosynthesis or whatever that. I don't remember that science stuff. But it's needed. And devour them. The sword shall buy the cities. It shall consume and it shall devour. Consume and devour. Aren't those just great words? He consumed the whole dinner and then he devoured the whole pie. Nothing left. Because this is the reason why. Why it's happening. Why the judgment of God? Of their own consuls. What are their own consuls? The 400 prophets or, or, or 450 prophets of Jezebel? The calves we spoke about in the last chapter. The calves have been. Oh, moo moo God. What am I supposed to do? Count the bumps on your head, the, the, what the, the tea leaves in the bottom of your drink, what the Uji board says, how the stars are lined up. Anything but God. And my people still calls him his people. Are bent to backsliding from me. In the Old Testament, the, the way of salvation, it's gone. You know what's great for illustration for a Christian here? You can be a child of God and you still are you still are a child of God. Even in backsliding. You can't lose that. You are in Christ. You are in God by Jesus Christ. Not the Jew. Not in the Old Testament. Though they called them to the Most High, capital A, None at all would exalt him. So they called to God, but they didn't worship God. And you hear that all the time. Jesus Christ this, Jesus Christ that. Yeah, you're, you're exalting the name above Buddha or any other name, but you, you will not exalt Jesus Christ as 
who he is. Think of how many churches proclaim Jesus and they don't proclaim Jesus or who he really is and praise him and preach about him the way it's supposed to be. No, to them, he's a great healer. He's a great fortune. He's a great promise. He's the great, great of all greats. He'll never hurt you. He'll never harm you. That's not exalting who he is. Because that leaves out the fear of God, which is the beginning of knowledge. And without the knowledge of God, you're not going to know who he is. And they've lost the fear of God. They're fearing the calves. And Jeremiah, oh man, we haven't given the cakes to the queen of heaven. She's treating us so bad. we got to get back doing it. Who are they fearing? God or the queen of heaven? How shall I, God, give thee up, O Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, O Israel? See, God doesn't want to do it. How shall I make thee as a demo? How shall I how how shall I set thee as Zebum? Both these cities were destroyed with Sodom and Gomorrah. And those were people that God didn't even love. He did not even call them. They were just wicked, vile, heathen cities that the conscience has got nothing. That even just lot, his conscience was, here, take my daughter. Really? Come on, Ephraim. Come on, Israel. Think about Sodom and Gomorrah and Adama and Zimbalan. My heart is turned within me. God is in pain. My God, my, that's God speaking, repentings are kindled together. God is just sorry of what he, what these people have done to him. You know what he told Noah? I repent of what I've done with man. He told, listen, you know what? I'm just sorry I made him. And had there not been one just man, we wouldn't be here today. You realize that? If Noah was not just and went with the flow, we'd be all dead. Hell would be full already because there would be no more people of, of, of mankind. Had he drowned the entire world out without seeking Noah. Talk about a minority. And with that, God said, look, come on. Hosea is one man. And God is using him. Will you go tell them? Will you tell them to get right? You know, he told Jeremiah, I want you to go preach to those people. Guess what they're going to do? They're not going to listen to you. I will not execute. Execute is a good word. The fierceness of my anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim. For I am God and not a man. So God has no envy. God can control his anger, and yes, he gets angry. What do you do with, with, the, with the table changers and the people who sold the doves and the sheep in the temple? You think you got angry? Don't you think he just could have sat in that temple, walked out, and said, God, Father, destroy the whole place, just like you did Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't you think he could have done that? God caused the ground to open up with a group of people that went against him and Moses.
You know how you know how you know that God's merciful? Tornadoes eventually disappear, don't they? Hurricanes go back to be a little little wind, don't they? You wait till the Lord Jesus Christ comes back in anger. You realize at that point, everyone who's been against him will be utterly wiped out. I am God and not a man. Unto the Lord Jesus Christ is born. Job says, is there a man that can stand between us? Are you like a man that feels like me? Yes. When Jesus is born. So I guess the Jehovah Witnesses would have fun with this verse. The Holy One in the midst of thee. Watch this. In the midst of thee. And I will not enter into the city. <laughs> I'm in the midst of thee, but I'm not coming into your city. Why? Moo Moo's over there. You ready to have Moo Moo? You say, what's Moo Moo? Golden calf. You ought to be the Longhorn, Longhorn State. The barbecue. The fast food joints. What are all those products from a cow? They shall walk after the Lord. Oh, there's a future. Not yet. He shall roar like a lion. Lion of the tribe of Judah. When he shall roar, then children shall tremble from the west. Zechariah 8, 7, Isaiah 42, 13. Joel 3.16. When that lion roars, not the little sheep. He did his job. He went all the way to Calvary. He sacrificed himself on the Passover night. He arose. And, you know, none of those sheep came out of the grave that night. But you know what's funny? You know what came out that night? The children of Israel. They shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt. Why did they be trembling? There he is. And boy, did we do him wrong. That trembling, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That fear is what drives Jesus Christ to him say, okay, my brother, I'm ready to take you. They're ready to repent. They're ready to get right. They're ready to do what God expects them. And oh, look out Egypt when the Lord steps in. As a dove out of the land of Assyria, I have no idea. And I will place them in their houses. The regathering of the nation of Israel, saith the Lord. So I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to hold back my anger. I'm going to get you. But I'm going to plant you back in the land. Now explain to me uh, what we just read out uh, of Hosea. If this were to be read in the synagogues today. Explain to me where this where the where the Jew would understand the church age. Not in there. Chapter nine, I mean verse nine to the end, city period. Verse ten, they shall walk after the that period there would be the church age and the tribulation period. And then you got the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is not entered in Jerusalem today. You think he's there with the Roman Catholic Church and the 
and the Muslims and the, and the Arabians and the Palestinians and whoever else is there. Do you think he's sitting in there reigning and ruling? I just read something today, and, you know, that Israel's acknowledging sodomites. You think he's sitting there today? Ephraim compasses me about with lies. Ooh. Get a Mormon to, to acknowledge that he's Ephraim, then read that verse to him. Now let's see your film strip. I mean, you can't be in a cult and, and proclaim what you proclaim and sit down with me and say, okay, now let's see what the Bible says about you. You're compressed with lies. Now I'm supposed to listen to you? But you know what America is? You know what the world is today? You know why the, 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 the morons are growing so much? Because people believe lies. There are grown-up adult people Males and females who would have a temper tension if you told them there was no Santa Claus. There are just parents that would kill you, throw you in battery acid, burn you, put you among snakes, and then rub you with, with the harshest sandpaper and run you over with all the, the Greyhound buses there in the world if you were to tell a little boy of theirs that there's no Easter Bunny. And I know of Christian parents, mothers, who tell their child when they lose a tooth, put it under the pillow, there's a tooth fairy is going to come. And they're all lies. And God does not respect it. But they do think that God, oh, God, over. it's a little white lie. And the house of Israel with deceit. God is against lying, and he's against deceit. And he'll tell you so. He just told you, Ephraim is compassed about with lies in the house of Israel with deceit. Imagine a born-again, Bible-believing, saved Christian being called up to God, and God say, you see what that was? Yeah, you are a liar. Preacher such and such, stand forth. What was this you had in your church? It's a deceit. Pope, whatever name, come on up. First of all, your name is not Pope. Pious, your name is not Pope whatever. Your name is such and such. You're a liar. Pray to Mary. That's deceit. At the great white throne judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, God will call your lies lies, and you'll call your deceit deceit, and he won't bat an eye, and he won't care what you have to say. He doesn't care if it's a sin. He will tell you it's a sin. And he won't ask anybody's opinion but the word. Paul was not afraid to name names and what they did. John was not afraid to name names and say what they did. Jude was not afraid to name names and do what and tell what they did. And unless you repent, as we talked about in this message, you think you're getting away with it, you'll stand before God one day, save their laws, and you will be named, and your lies and your deceits will be called out. You will give an account. You may fool your wife. You may fool your children. You may fool everybody. But if you have an adulterous affair, God will call you two out. If you stole from the company and nobody ever caught you, he will point it out. We will know one day where Jimmy Hoffa is. We will know one day what happened to John F. Kennedy that night, that day when he took a ride with the top down of his car. We will know. We will know what happened truly at the Branch Davidian compound in Texas.
we will know. We will know if you are truly saved or if you're truly not saved. We will know. All the little secrets that go on in your house. God will reveal them. If it's not in this lifetime, he will reveal it at the judgment. And he'll call you who you are. You better get it right with God right now. You better get it right with the people you're involved with. You better get it under the blood. You better repent of it. Because if you don't do it now, you're going to face with it. Be not deceived. God's not marked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall also... Wait. Whatsoever a man is not deceived. Whatsoever he sows, that he shall... Re I've really messed up that way. Galatians 6, 7. Ephraim and Israel are not going to be hiding. You know what happened with Jeremiah? The city is sacked. A Gentile came up to Jeremiah and said, How are you doing, sir? Good. You Jeremiah? Yes, I am. God told me to tell you this has happened because of your sins. Yeah, I know. God's a righteous judge that before he casts judgment... He's going to send men. He's going to send his word. He's going to tell you what you need to do to bypass. And if you don't get right, the judgment's going to come. And you will be called upon what you've done. 